Alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all and that he grants us a place in his jannah. Jannah to the those. Ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Uh, one of the questions that come out from the description of the Jannah series, uh, and it's a very important question, uh, which is that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-akhir, meaning the last one, meaning the eternal one, meaning the one that will always remain, how is it then possible that the people of Jannah and the people of Jahannam will remain therein forever? Does it mean that they will remain alongside Allah? Then wouldn't that be shirk? Meaning Allah exists for eternity and then so does the creation exist for eternity? Or does it have an alternative meaning? Does it mean that Jannah and Jahannam eventually must come to an end? So that they are not eternal. And so that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remains and nothing from his creation. See now, this rhetoric and this theorization created a big problem for the people of Kalam, the Jahmi and the Mu'tazila and the Kullabi that came after. Uh, so they said, خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا abada, Meaning the people of Jannah staying in there for eternity. The people uh, of the hellfire, وَمَا هُمْ بِخَارِجِينَ مِنَ النَّارِ They will not leave the hellfire. This must have an alternative explanation because that's the only other way that we can understand it. So what they will do is they will use other ayahs from the Qur'an to try and promote their aqidah, which is that they believe that the hellfire in some way or some form will come to an end. And this is the belief of the Jahmiya. The Jahmiya do not believe that Jannah and Jahannam is eternal. So they will use other ayahs from the Qur'an where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا مَا دَامْتُ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْعُرْضُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ رَبُّكْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they will remain in there as long as the heavens and the earth existed. إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ رَبُّكْ Except for who of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was. So this is from Surah Hud. You can look at the, the translation for uh, a greater description as to what the ayah is saying. But what they are using from this ayah is to say that the heavens and the earth has been used as a measurement for how long these people will stay in Jah- Jannah and Jahannam. That means it must come to an end. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, in Surah Naba'ah, لَابِثِينَ فِيهَا أَحْقَابَ They will stay in there for أَحْقَابَ أَحْقَابَ is a large period of time. Hence, time must come to an end in Jannah Jahannam. Hence, Jannah Jahannam must come to an end. Why? Because they're saying here, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remain. And if we were to say that the creation remains, then that would be shirk. This is the view of the Jahmiyyah. The Mu'tazila took a similar view, except that what they said is that Jannah and Jahannam will remain... But the people in Jannah and Jahannam will cease to exist. This is because things with a soul cannot remain. And that's what they see as being shirk. Things that are alive with a soul, animate things, cannot remain. So some of them said it comes to an end, like the Jahmiya, the Mu'tazila. And some of the Mu'tazila say that the people of Jannah and Jahannam will freeze. At a point where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put a stop to their existence and they will just freeze. They won't perish like the Jahmiya believe but uh, because that would then mean that they have another death after a death. And the Mu'tazila say you can't have a death after another death. That means you will just freeze. You will not exist and you will not exist at the same time. Freeze. The Kullabi and the Ashairah and the Matrudiya that came after them very similar but the Kullabi and the Ashairah what they say is that, now this is something important in their aqeelah, in their madhab, which is that whenever you give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a characteristic of something, or the creation the characteristic of something, it means that characteristic has always been there and that characteristic will always remain. Now, what we are discussing here is the eternal regression and the eternal reoccurrence as been you know, used by the people of Kalam, and this kind of thing is still also being used by you know, atheists and, you know, Philosophers, if you want to call them that. So the Asha'ira and the Kullabiya, they say, people have always existed and that, eter- that eternal uh, uh, regression remains and that eternal reoccurrence will also remain. Meaning humans, creation, have always existed from beforehand and humans and creation will always exist for eternity. These are the views from the different Malayat. Ahl sunnah We say that you did not exist. هَلْ أَتَى إِلَى الْإِنسَانِ هِنَا مِنَ الدَّهِ لَمْ يَكُمْ شَيْءٍ مَذْكُرُ Do you not realize that there was a point in time that man was not even a thing to be made mention of? Nobody knew what insan was. The Messenger of Allah said, كَانَ اللَّهُ 
ولم يكن شيء غيره الله سبحانه وتعالى existed and nothing existed beside him سبحانه وتعالى therefore creation has a beginning point Allah سبحانه وتعالى doesn't have a beginning point because لم يند ولم يند he has no beginning and he has no end سبحانه وتعالى so we existed and then we are caused to die and then we are existing again and then we are caused to die sorry we existed so we sorry there is death and there is life and then there is death and there is life again there is death not existing then it became then we became alive and then we died again and then we become alive again so the first point is that there is death we don't exist as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah al-baqarah كيف تكفرون بالله وكنتم أموات How can you disbelieve in Allah when you were dead? Meaning you didn't exist. Then you came into existence. Now some of the ulama have said, when did this come about? Some of them have said when uh, the ard was made. Meaning when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala أخذ من من ظهور آدم when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took from the, the, the loins of uh, Adam alayhi salam uh, and he made it for us to make a witness Allah to be rabbikum qalu bala shahidna am i not your lord and we said yes some of the ulama have said that is our first life after that we were dead again and after that we were brought back into life in this the life of this dunya and then we're dead again some of from the ulama this is a genuine difference of opinion between ahl sunnah some of the ulama will say that would then mean you have three lives not two what seems to me for to me to be the stronger I think Sheikh Islam from what I can recall as the opinion of the first one we just mentioned, some of the ulama have said you were dead, meaning you didn't exist. Then you are alive, meaning the life of the dunya. Then you were dead again, so you left the life of this dunya, then you went into the barzakh. Again, a life where there is no real movement for free will for you to do good and stay away from evil. And then you are alive again, and that is the life that you will now not experience death after that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even tells us about uh, the people on the day of judgment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we were dead twice and we were alive twice meaning you didn't exist dead alive in the life of this dunya alive dead again barzakh alive again akhirah therefore ahl sunnah say if you were to say that Jannah and Jahannam come to an end, this is disbelief in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in the Quran. Uh, these are explicit um, ayat from the Quran which tell us, and this is the issue of Ijma' from the time of the Salaf, that Jannah and Jahannam is present and the people that will abide therein will abide therein for eternity. If you were to believe in the eternal reoccurrence and the eternal uh, regression, like the Qulabi and the Ashaira believe, because what they said, remember, is that if you give a sifa, if you give an attribute to something, that attribute must have been part of that thing from before. So I'll give you an example. This is something that we've just covered recently. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they believe that Allah speaks. We say we believe that Allah speaks in a manner that befits His Majesty. As Imam Ahmed said, it's a kalam. Kefasha Matasha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks in a manner that befits his majesty, however he wants and whenever he wants. So this is known with Ahl Sunnah as a sifa al ikhtiyariya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does this action in a manner that befits his majesty whenever he pleases. But the Kullabi and the Ashari said, No, if you are giving this attribute to Allah, which they affirm that Allah speaks, it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is constantly doing that action. Why? Because the sifa has to be part of the that. The attribute has to be part of the essence and you can't detach it. That is their way of refuting the Jahmi and the Mu'tazila because the Jahmi and the Mu'tazila, the reason why they, or the way that they ended up uh, disbelieving in the attributes of Allah is to say that his attributes are not part of his essence. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not merciful. That is an attribute which is separate to his essence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't forgive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't answer to your du'a. This is because the Jahmiyyah and the Mu'tazila believe that the essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is different to his attributes. But the Kullabi and the Ashaira say, no, that's wrong. The attributes are part of the essence. And let's give you an example. If you've got a wall, that's the essence. 
How would you describe that wall? Well, it's white, it's got plaster, it's tall, it's wide, it's new, it's old. So they have said, when you've got something which is the essence, the attributes are part of the essence. And this is what Ahl-Sunnah believe, except the difference between Ahl-Sunnah and the Qulabi and the right, is that they have said that that essence and the attribute consistently remain active. So the Qulabi, as an example, say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks and he continues speaking and he doesn't stop. Whereas Ahl sunnah say, no, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks in a manner that befits the majesty number one and he speaks whenever he wants, however he wants. Meaning sometimes he speaks, sometimes he... But the Qulabi, they say, no, how can Allah stop speaking? How can an attribute be, de- be, be, be taken away from the essence for even a moment? Applying this to what we've got here, if creation exists, which is an attribute of that creation, you are alive, then that attribute must have always been there and that must always continue to be. Ahl sunnah say as a response, that would be shirk with the names and attributes of Allah. Because Allah is al-awwal and Allah is al-akhir. لم يكن له ليس كمثله شيء. There is nothing like him. There is nothing comparable to him. Meaning the creation has a beginning and the creation has an end. هو الأول هو الآخر والظاهر والباطن. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the first one, he is the last one. Uh, he is the apparent one and he is the hidden one. These are things that are attributes that can only befit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If a person wants to believe that, then that would be shirk. And that's the response that Ahlul Sunnah gave. Now, Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah says, uh, and this is the justice that we must have, right? Just because we say this about the people of Bid'ah doesn't mean that we are, you know, trying to um, uh, uh, mention the good and leave the bad. You know, these different ideas that people have that with the people of Bid'ah, you must be harsh and you always must be aggressive. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, out of his justice, says, that the people of the Asha'ir and the Qulhabi, they're the closest to Ahl sunnah because you can see now, through this discussion, that the Jahmi and the Mu'tazir are really far away in this. And this teaches us a very important principle when we're discussing uh, areas of Aqeedah and Manhaj. I mean, this has been very lengthy in the response, but to answer your question is that man will remain in Jannah or Jahannam for eternity. May Allah protect us from the hellfire and give us the highest level of firdos. That doesn't contradict that Allah is the first one and the last one because we were dead and then we were alive. Dead and alive. Therefore, we have been taken out of existence and then brought back into existence. That is not the case for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And through his mercy and his grace upon the people of Jannah, he will let them live and abide in a bliss for eternity. And out of his justice and his hikmah and his mercy as well, some people will be in the hellfire for eternity. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he grants us the best understanding of his religion and the best of practice and the best of preparation. Hadha wallahu a'lam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.